On tonight's show, we have actress and comedian, Diani Rajay. And now, for your host, Cool Park. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 118 of Kicking It With Cool Card. I am your host, Cool Card. Hey, I'm here every night. Well, not every night. Every Tuesday night, <laughs> 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, kicking it with somebody that's going to bring you some gems, bring you some value. Um, last week on episode 117, I had Brittany Nicole. She's a fashion designer uh, here out of um, Atlanta, Georgia. She has some great designs, great style, great uh, sense of fashion, and great sense of style. She does her own thing. She has a website. She creates custom dresses. So definitely check her out. All the links are down below in the description once you head on over there and check out the replay on that episode. <laughs> All right. But this week, we're going back to acting and comedy and just content creation. And we're going to talk about life and talk about the ups and the downs of the business and all that good stuff with my new guest, Diani Rajay. Um, yeah, so she's an actress, she's a model, she lives out in LA, and she's out there and she's trailblazing, she's doing her thing, and we're gonna dive into her life and, you know, just see how she's making out out there, alright? Let's get it, y'all. I'm gonna bring her in with a nice, warm, cool welcome the way I do it, and we're gonna get the show rolling. Let's get it. Oh, I can't read the vibe quite yet. Her chakras might need to be balanced. Really? Did you hear her voice? Yeah. Scientology might be. Okay. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen, Diani Rajay. How you doing, girl? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm good. You got me looking all professional like I did some stuff. <laughs> girl, you have done some stuff. You better recognize your, your accolades and your, your accomplishments. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> gotta, hey, listen, we got to celebrate that. No, we do. We really do. It's been, whew, it's been a journey. So, yes, celebrate everything. Every yes, thing. yes. And that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to celebrate you. We're here to talk about your journey. You know, I know you have some ups and downs, smiles and frowns and all that good stuff. But listen, we're going to talk about how you shed that new light on the situations, right? I love it. I love the type. When I saw that, I was like, yes, this is perfect for me. This is this is everything. I don't know how he knew, but... <laughs> I don't know, girl. Just the energy. Just like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, some people... They need to hear that because uh, some people get stuck in a rut and don't know how to shine a new light on the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get into that. But hey, you know how I do it. Every show, I got to start it out with a prayer. You good with that, right? Absolutely. Oh, got to ask. Let's get it. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this moment. Thank you for this night. Thank you for this time and this platform, Lord Jesus, and just bringing us together to talk so eloquently about her life, her apology is her journey, and just everything, the smiles and the frowns, the ups and downs, Lord Jesus, it's all worth it. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for waking us up this morning, just giving us life, giving us love, food on the table, clothes on our back, and just all of the necessities. We just give you all the victory, all the glory, all the love, all the praise in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You be praying. You be praying. Hey. Are you the pastor on the side? Nah, some people told me I I might want to check it check that out, but I don't know. <laughs> I check it out. You know what I'm saying? They said you know you might want to check that out. I don't yeah. know. I don't. You be know. friends. You be friends. I'm I like, appreciate that. I mean, um, you know, I'm real spiritual. I got a very very strong relationship, personal relationship. You know what I mean? I can't say that I go to church or spend time at the church anymore. I used to, but. I don't know. It ain't the same for me no more. So, but I do got that strong relationship. Pray all day. I pray. 
I pray when when it's good. I pray when it's bad. You know what I'm saying? All day long, I just stop. It hits me. I gotta do it. You know. So yeah, that connection is definitely there. So yes, indeed. I got a question. Um, how many times have you had to start over? And whatever comes to mind, talk about it. All the time. All my whole life. <laughs> Every time, all the time. Um, I started out at, like with college. I went to school for dance. I was a dance mm. major, um, and so I thought I was gonna own my own studio and teach mm. dance and do all this jazz. And like in the middle of it, I was like, "Oh no, I don't want to do that at all." <laughs> and, what happened? Did it just um, just hit you, it, or was yeah, it a build up? Like, I, I still love dance um, very much. It, it, it feeds my soul like I really okay. do love it but majoring in it and getting graded on something like that something that you love so dearly was kind of hard for me mm. and I kept trying to get into the BFA program and I like freshman year I auditioned for the dance company made it in that usually doesn't happen yeah um, as far as the BFA program I kept auditioning and they're like you just don't you don't have the drive you had when you first got here. I'm like, well, I'm t I'm getting graded on something that I love. Like, this is just. But they were still in your joy. They yeah. Was the joy out of it. It wasn't, it wasn't fun anymore. So, yeah. um, my whole life I wanted to be a model, but I was too short. Um, but I don't really take no for an answer. I realized lately, like, I'm not good at that. So I kept trying and kept trying and kept trying and kept trying. Everybody was telling me no. They were like, how, how tall are you? How tall are you? I'm five five. Okay, so why don't you just go into commercial modeling? Were you trying to do that way? That's where I got. That's where I ended okay. up. Okay. But yeah, when I was young, because this, I think maybe I was like 12 when I was trying to be a model, 10 or 12. And just taking all the pictures, everybody saying, no, you have long legs, but you just, it's not going to work. It's a no for us. Yeah. So, <laughs> Crazy. Finally, yeah. In college, though, I finally got somebody to say yes, but it was commercial print model. Okay. And then they started sending me out on commercial auditions. And I was like, oh. Okay, it's cool. This is fun. Okay. So I ended up graduating early from college and then moving to Austin. Yeah, I read it. I read in your bio that you finessed some petition to get a. Out <laughs> <laughs> there finessing. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't realize I was in my bio, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I was always in school. My mama always had me in school. If I wasn't, if it wasn't the school year, I was still in some type of enrichment program. And I kind of kept that going in college. So even summer school, I was always in class. So there was like this weird mini master. Mm -hmm. And there was one class that I needed to take in order for me to graduate early. So I put up a petition and like had people sign it so that I could have that class so I could get out early. So what was happening? They didn't offer it that semester? Because I know sometimes yeah, they offer no. I, I honestly, I I don't even know if, like, they offered the class anymore. Like, I had to go talk, talk to the teacher, oh, too. Oh, wow. Like, I had to get the teacher in. She was like, oh, yeah, well, I would love to teach it again or whatever the case was. I don't remember exactly. But I had to talk to her first and be like, would you be open to teaching this? She was like, yeah. And then I was like, okay, now I got to get all these students to sign up. And, like, I didn't think I was going to make it. I needed, like, one last signature. And I came back to the building, the dance building one day, and somebody had the signature. I was like, oh, look at God. See, look, so, perfect. Shining the perfect. light, new light on old yeah. shit. Yep. <laughs> right? Yeah. Vanessa, finagling, yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what we gotta do out here. We gotta figure it out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Make a way out of no way. Yeah, you can't take no for an answer. Man, yeah. you know what we would be if we took no for an answer? Cause I know I don't take no for an answer. So I know you've come a long way by not taking no for an answer. I know yeah. I have. I really have. I, my whole life don't make no sense. I, <laughs> anything I'm gonna say tonight is that it's like, how did you get there, Deanny? Like, this makes no sense. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, rock with it. <laughs> so 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 you you were dancing pretty much your entire life. Mm -hmm. You you did ballet? Yeah, that Ooh. ballet's not my favorite, but Girl, I ballet. knew you had them corns on them toes. Wow. You had you had them calluses wow. on them toes. Yeah. <laughs> I got these nice feet. Hey, I'm a foot model, so <laughs> I wasn't doing um uh, like I wasn't doing a lot of ballet. I had to okay. do ballet. That's the 
before, but I wasn't doing point and things okay. like that. So my feet made it out safe. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, got I did you. jazz and modern and all that stuff. Okay. So I started dancing when I was three years old and then majoring in it. And then when I okay. went to Austin, I was still trying. I had this dream. I was going to move to California and be a dancer, a background dancer. Uh -huh. I'm not actually really good at hip hop, but I do like, I can twerk, okay? I don't have no movie, <laughs> but it be working, okay? <laughs> it be moving. You got the motion. Head, was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the motion. I was like, we can Yo. <laughs> work with what you got. Yeah, absolutely. With confidence, and people yes. will believe in you. <laughs> That's really what I learned. Like, it, once you believe in you, I'm telling you. Me. Listen, that's more than half the battle. If you yeah. go in there and you do it and you believe in it, you'll get yeah. some people to start believing, even if you ain't that great. And that's and real. I struggle, I struggle with that part for a long time, like actually believing that I belong in the places that I was trying to get to. Oh, and wow. things didn't change until I was like, wait, no, I I deserve to be here. I believe in myself. I'm really, yeah. I'm actually really good. But I was so caught up because acting was never my goal. Like, that growing up that was never my intention so, so did, um, with with them basically stealing your joy with the dance yeah. what did that do to you like what did that do to you though how, how did you respond to that that was really rough when um because i went to talk to one of my advisors and i was like like what is it and when she told me that i was like well i can't that's not something i can really change exactly like if you were like oh you need to work on your technique more okay yeah, yeah i could be in the studio all day but saying that i didn't have the same passion for it anymore then that's that's something different so yeah, absolutely. That was, i'm not saying that you can't get that back you absolutely can but but no was, one can but no one can do that for you though right and yeah. i i had to find that myself and i didn't find it until later yeah. That, okay. Well, no, I'm still passionate about dance. I was just being graded on it, kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. They really me. took the fun out of it. I mean, yeah. honestly, business takes the fun out of a lot of things. That's child's play. You know what I mean? People, people have taken child's play and turned it into lucrative businesses. But it takes the fun out of the child's play because now it's just all numbers and mm -hmm. you know, cracking the whip. You need to be better. You need to be better. You need to do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why a lot of NFL players they're just there for the money. Oh, they're just there for the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of NFL players, man, they get there, they make it, they get the money, and then they see the business, and they're like, whatever. You can tell, you can tell in their play, their performance. You know, there's there's exceptions, but you can tell the people who've checked out because of whatever they've gone through. They've been shuffled around the league twenty times. Now they're just there for a job. They're just there for a check. They don't even care if they ride the bench, because it's the politics in the business. Did you? Yeah. I don't want to get off subject. Go ahead, though. Go ahead. What are you no, going to say? But... Okay. I don't want to get off subject, but there was this guy. I think he played. I think his last gig was for the Jets. And he went to school to be an engineer, like a, um, a train conductor engineer, right? Mm -hmm. So they cut him last time. And his parents, they were both sickly. So he went back home. He got a job. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was a conductor, a railroad conductor. And he was making over $100,000 a year. The Jets called him back and he was like, nope, I got to take care of my mom and my dad and I can't put my trust in this because it's so up and down. And, you know, like they'll call you back. The league will call you back, sign, sign a deal and then cut you the next week. And that's real. But and now and now this man is giving up this hundred thousand dollar job who that's oh that's providing for his mom and his dad because they couldn't work yeah. and they were sickly so he had to pay their medical bills so say he quit that job went sign that contract with the jets and then the very next week they cut him and that's a 90 percent possibility i did not know that i always see the stories of all oh, these nfl players are signing these multi-million dollar deals and blah 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 like that's what i see yeah um, and even but, I, but here's the craziness about that business though even they can get cut before the season starts. They signed the mega deals and even they can get cut. It's not like what? the 90s. Yeah, man. Back in the 90s when you had a star player, they they were pretty much like planted in that in that team. Like they you knew they weren't going to get cut. They could mess up, go out, get drunk, DUI whatever. They weren't going to cut them. This day and age, 
please, one mistake. They'll, 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 there's loopholes in those contracts, always. So one well, mistake, they will chop that shit up and kick you out. I don't care how big of a name you have. Huh? There, goes my, there goes my plan to marry an NFL player. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't Can't count on yeah, that anymore. <laughs> don't don't try to be the trophy wife. <laughs> yes. So you didn't listen to your college instructor, so you, you know well it's <laughs> I didn't. I didn't and I did it now today I'm like, you know what? She was on to something. She was on to something. School would have always been there. Um yeah. but I just I that had to do with my self esteem. I didn't see what she saw. And then, but now I'm like, Oh hell yeah, I could have done that. You could have done that, but now, like I said, that's not even uh, that's uncertain. So you've missed that window. So I don't did. just you know yep. keep doing the comedy. Do you? <laughs> you know? I'm be a hard worker. <laughs> yes, put that work in, girl. Don't be the trophy wife. You see what it gets you. You see it. You see it every day in the media. You see what that gets I'm you. I'm going for. I'm going for power couple now. I'm going for power. Okay. Couple. All right. So meet you a guy mm -hmm. who's, you know. I don't. I don't know. Me, whoever you meet. Well, we do. <laughs> we leave that up to God because yeah. these men, they listen. And you in LA? God bless you. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard out here in these LA streets. God, and girl, from what I heard, it's hard in every street. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my God! That's no. what I heard. No. Word on the street is. It's hard. The streets are rough. Okay. It's hard out there. So let's fast forward. So you you quit dance. You packed up. You went to mm -hmm. L.A. You moved to L.A. Got out there. How did you get bitten by the acting bug? What what made you just switch gears and dive into that? I first I moved after college. I moved to Austin. Okay. And then after Austin, I moved to San Diego because my brother was in the Navy. Okay. Um, and so it would just be easier for him to pay the bills. Right, for sure. for sure. Go ahead and freeload a little bit till you get, you know, yeah, get on your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I got to LA. I really had no plan. Um, all my dreams were like just so small, and I didn't, I, I didn't, I had no plan really. Okay. Um, but I moved here and I started working at Maggiano's. And one of my coworkers one day, she's like, Diana, you're really funny. No one's ever said that to me. Uh, I used to like, especially if you knew me up until middle school, like I really didn't talk. I didn't talk yeah. at all. Um, so the people that knew me then, they're like, wait, you, first of all, you say words. And then <laughs> second of all, you're on stage saying stuff, you funny. So that was a really big deal. I never, no one ever been like, oh, you're funny. So she was like, I think you would enjoy improv. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay. I'm, I don't know what that is, but yeah. So I started, I uh, signed up for class at UCB and fell in love. And wow. I was like, okay, I, this acting thing, this could be it. It could be fun. And so, then I started, um, someone else told me that I should try stand up. And I was like, that sounds scary, but let's see. And yeah. then I fell in love with that too. What was your first time on stage like? Horrible. I mean, um, <laughs> all, all my good times were horrible. Oh my God. <laughs> it's scary up there, a lot, especially coming from an improv background. I yeah. used to have it, my posse with me, my crew. So yeah. if I'm not funny, somebody in my crew is going to make me look funny. Right. I can trust them. Um, but being on stage alone was very scary. But I make, we made it through, and the people laughed, and then that that's a, a high. You're like, oh, okay. Now, did you go up there and did you just wing it? Did you just tell like real life stories or did you write it down? Yeah. So at the time I was writing a web series based on my dating life. And I was okay. like, I don't, I'm not a writer. I don't know if this is funny. And they were like, oh, try it out at this storytelling slash stand up show. Okay. Like, okay. So I think that that show I ended up doing like kind of a story that I had been through. Okay. Like, I mean, that's, but that's good though, because you, you got to get comfortable because you're yeah. talking about yourself mm -hmm. and that's and that's what i've heard like people who give you know comedic advice is like just get up there and just talk about your life you know do, talk about what you know don't get up there trying to talk about yeah. 
what other people are talking about or what you think is funny, like talk about you. And I've heard that from like experienced comedians, you know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. talk about you and that's what's going to sell. That's what's going to, you know, have them laughing because it is yeah. because naturally people are just funny. You have a funny life. You have funny experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you can get up there and convey it, there you go. People love it and you're relatable. And they're like, oh man, or you stupid like me. I've, I've gotten myself into a lot of stupid <laughs> situations and they be like, bitch, what? So you know, laugh with me, at me, you know, let's right. do it. <laughs> you, and you even went to like, uh, you've had training for comedy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, I spent many, many, many years training at UCB. Okay. Um, then I took one class at the Groundlings and then I, I, well, okay. So I have a lot of friends that are stand-up comedians and, but it, it's just, I was just a nervous wreck with stand-up. So right, I, like, I don't know what I'm doing. They're like, just get on stage and just keep doing it and you'll learn. I'm like, okay. no, that doesn't seem safe. Like <laughs> I need to know. So I took some uh, stand-up classes too. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you to kind of talk about, like, the difference. Because I know there's some people who, like, I think Sarai, she just she just got up there and just started doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And just kept mm -hmm. doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. And for you guys that don't know, Sarai is her one of her good friends. They do the uh, web series, by the way, which we're going to talk about later. And we're going to show a clip of that. Um, I hope she's watching. I don't know. But that's your crew. You got your crew. Everybody's cool. The whole Hola. crew. Hey. We loving the crew. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I just want to talk about this because you actually went and got some formal training, but there's mm -hmm. some people who are just, I don't want to say naturally funny. Well, I, guess, I guess you're naturally funny as well, but you wanted to go and get a technique or just something, some type of structure, but you got people who are just funny and they'll just hop up there, yeah. balls to the wall. They don't care and just do it. And they, they learn along the way. Like, can you speak to that? Like the difference, the differences between the two? I think I, I also, I wasn't as brave because you got to be funny and brave to just get up there. And I will say, when I first started doing stand up, I did do that because my friends were like, just get up there. And so I did that. I did that for a long time. Okay. And it was fine, but I still wanted to know like how exactly to write a joke. And okay. I think at the time, I still didn't know exactly what made me funny. Right. Because um, people were like, yeah, you're funny, you're funny. And I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, saying things and i don't know why you think this is funny um i was panicking about like getting the technical i don't know but uh so i was i wasn't as brave to just get up there and keep winging it i wanted yeah. to know exactly you wanted to how know how to set the joke up yeah and the, there are different yeah there are different ways to write yeah. jokes there are different you know types of people like some people do jokes of about politics and what's going right. on in the world right now and some people are storytellers and so right. it's just all so i wanted to know all of that and i also wanted to be in a safe space because yeah. i i i had a thing about being a perfectionist and like i didn't want to fail so i didn't want to get up there and look stupid so if i'm in a class in a safe space and these people don't know what they're doing either then it's okay right yeah, and i feel you, like i like, feel <laughs> like if you if you can get the technical stuff out of your head then you can really be up, get up there and just really be you. Cause now you're not yeah. just like fishing and grabbing for things out of the air. Like, okay, what's my next, you know what I mean? And you get yeah. the technical stuff down. Now you can really get up there, be you, feel the crowd and know yeah. how to respond. Cause you, cause you know, if, if some jokes aren't working, then you know, okay, you could feel the crowd and be like, oh, well, let me go in this bag. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you're up there thinking all in your head, yeah, you're not reading the crowd. You know? Yeah. And what I, I love, uh, so right because she does a lot of crowd work too that's something that i want to work on like every now and then i will but like she is just make <laughs> I <laughs> know. magnificent at it uh, but that is something that and you got you got to work with the crowd because some crowds aren't great or they're you know heckling or something you yeah. just gotta roll with it and figure out how to work it into the show and not get embarrassed or frustrated yeah. or whatever i think you know what i think and I may be wrong, but Sarai to me is uh, Sarai to me it seems like she's a good shit talker. Like she can just talk shit, drop of a hat. <laughs> she can talk shit. So that way you can you're good. Anybody heckles, you go right at them. You know what I'm saying? So I think a good shit talker would be a good person, yeah. a good comedian to basically work the crowd. You know what I mean? And, and basically back their asses off you, right? Back them down. Like <laughs> you really want this smoke? Right. Exactly. So yeah. 
Now, as far as the, um, the acting, right? You mentioned to me that, okay, let me ask you this. So when you, once you got started in acting, right? You got out there, were you just kind of like doing background stuff or did you run and go get an agent? Like how did that work out? And then I'm gonna go to that next question. Um, yeah, I originally, I got a commercial agent. Commercials always have been easier for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm still working on this TV film stuff. So I got, I went out and got a commercial agent and then I, yeah, I did background work for a little bit, but just, them conditions were too rough for me. So background <laughs> stuff is grueling. I'm telling you. They don't you. treat you well. Man, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I've done it. I've done it and I've done it and I said, hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I always feel a way about like, cause I don't want to feel like that. Like, oh no, I'm not doing background work when I'm yeah. not doing it. You know, but at the same time. Yeah. It, 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 listen, <laughs> when you, when you, when you're not where you want to be, it kind of plays with your mind because you're like, I don't want to be ungrateful. And I don't right. have to act like I'm too good for it. Right. But right. damn it, I am. You know, right, yeah. it, it comes a point where you got to say, you know what? I'm better than this. Yeah. I'm not going to look down on it because it's offering me an yeah. opportunity to get on set, fill it out, see how you see how you maneuver right. on set, the etiquette, all that. You can learn a lot just being a background. Yeah. But it comes a point when you, you just got to get fed up and be like, you know what? I ain't doing this no more. I'm better than this. I want more than this. Mm -hmm. And this ain't it. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. I, I reached out. Especially when, like, last week I booked a commercial. I had my own trailer and it was bringing me stuff and I had a robe and, and everything. And now <laughs> I'm in this tent. <laughs> it's, it's freezing cold. There's no heat. Right. I'm snuggling in a jacket. There's no food. Right. Got water. Yeah. yeah. So that you absolutely do have to be like, is it? I think it's a wonderful thing to do to be on set to learn. I've yeah. met some amazing people um but they did it was like all right well i'm not i'm not doing this anymore yeah yeah you, but gotta then you are that takes up your whole day and you don't have the time to go on auditions and do right all these other things, so. right and and yeah. really what have you gained honestly i mean you might have gained a little knowledge but after you've done it so many times it's like what have you gained maybe right. a free meal and a couple bucks for 12 14 hours yeah, no, money is not that great. Man, I could have, you listen, go sell some on eBay and get that little money. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You know, and and listen, like you said, this is not to talk down on it or, right. or, or turn your nose up to it. It's just like after so many times, you know, everything runs its course, man. And after you've done that shit so many times, it's like, listen, <laughs> enough is enough. Now I need to start booking some lead roles. I need to get this agent, start doing some real auditions. You know what I'm saying? It's good preparation, y'all. So it, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, so, I don't look down at, on it at all. I, I think it's a great place to get started, at least. Yeah. yeah. And uh, need, actually, being a background in a commercial pays better, and they treat you better, and you might get to, you know, be like, right. Face it. <laughs> and, and you have more fun. You have more fun. Yeah. Because on because on commercials, it's it's like it's it's really light, you know. Yeah. Like the environment is it's really light. Nobody's walking around straight face. Everybody's having fun because, you know, commercials are quirky. So it's like, you know, yeah. Speaking of that, though, let's get into your reel. I want to show everybody what you do. And then we'll get back and we'll talk about them agents dropping you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's all good, girl. New light. Remember? New Absolutely. light. New it was light. for the best. We looking up. Positive. Yeah. Everything's good now. Let's go. God cleared everything Welcome, queens. Let's get fucked up and talk about our lives. Is she drunk? Tori. Mm -hmm. Gracie. Mm -hmm. I love you. No, I love you. <laughs> Ladies, listen. Don't let a man tell you anything. You can do whatever you want. You're gorgeous. Fuck Brian. Who's Brian? Too hot to handle. <laughs> Best thing about Tori is she's like a drunk girl in the club bathroom. What do you mean? That's her therapy style. She acts like a drunk girl at the club in the bathroom, giving you compliments and encouraging you. Come on. Honda, we're proud. 
sound of our heritage. Like with the Civic. It's stylish. And fast, with great performance and handling. All things we learned building engines like this. So hurry in to the Honda Dream Garage sales event. <laughs> yes, putting in that work, girl. <laughs> putting no. in that. Putting in that. Hey, you say you just booked, right? You just you just filmed another one, right? Uh, what did I do? I that was probably hand modeling. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said you do you do foot modeling too, right? Feet. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so that explains all the pictures of the feet of the shoes. You know, you just got random shots of just shoes. I'm like, what the hell? Okay, all right. I know you did the hand modeling, <laughs> shoe modeling, the foot modeling. Oh. That is hilarious, and that's probably what everybody is like. Why is he only posting her feet all the time? <laughs> right. Nobody really likes those pictures, but I gotta you know put it out there. I'm gonna anyway. go back and like all of them. Thank you. Yeah, where my phone at? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go back and like them. Since I know that's work, I'm gonna go yes. and like them. Yes. So, I know what you're putting that up. No, but they're really good shots, though. I, I always thought, like, well, there's some professional foot shots, some yeah, shoot shots. Why she, <laughs> and why she yeah, I, random ass feet? I can't. I always thought, like, yo, I, huh? What, what? No, I was said I always would think to myself like, are those her feet? Are those her shoes? Or she just liked them shoes? Like, okay, so those yeah. Those are shoes. <laughs> uh, no, those are. I work with Just Fab a lot, so I oh, think okay. most of my feet shots are from Just Fab. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to go to their little website and try to pick your feet out, right? Yeah, it's so funny because my cousin will send me pictures and she'd be like, are these your ankles? And they will be my ankles. I'm like, how do you know that? Like, what do you Wow. What? Yes. That's crazy. Or she'll send me my hands. We're like, is this you? I'm like, this is crazy that you know this. How did you get into that? Hand modeling and foot modeling? Um, My whole life people told me I had nice hands and that I should be a hand model, but I didn't think that was a real job because... I'd never heard of that. And then one year, uh, one of my friends, my roommate, Monique, she had a friend, Ashley, who's now my friend as well. Mm -hmm. And she was a hand model. And she's like, no, girl, it's a real job. Uh, just take pictures of your hands and send them in. So I did that and I got signed. Oh, wow. So there's mm -hmm. a, there is an agency for that? Yeah, specifically for parts only. Oh, wow. See, that's mm -hmm. some new. See, that's new because out here in Atlanta, <laughs> I don't think we have. Yeah. We don't have that out here. We <laughs> maybe we do. I just haven't looked into you it. I probably got voiceover. Yeah, you probably do. Y'all probably do. Probably but do. yeah, after I signed, I was like, "Well, what other parts y'all need? What <laughs> I got? What y'all need?" But um, it was well, maybe, just my hands. Maybe, I, 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 huh? huh? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I thought. Uh, I was like, I think my feet look funny, but evidently they, they love them. <laughs> They be working. <laughs> be working, right? They get that work. I want, um, you know what? I may have to uh, look into that. I mean, look, do my hands look like they could? Well, my hands. Oh yeah, you got these. Yeah, actually, you For got real? nice hands. Yeah, yeah. I've gotten a few of my friends signed. Oh wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, I feel listen. like if things don't work out for me in acting, I could be a hand scout. I don't know if that's quite a job, but I. I be scouting. I'm always. It's so weird because I really do pay attention to people's hands now, and are I'm like, serious? "Are you a hair model? Are you interested?" And then I, I try to help them out. <laughs> oh wow! Hey, I'm gonna look into that. I mean, that's a little hustle. It's a. It's hey. I'm so blessed. It's it's been nice. It's been paying the bills. I just. Mm, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that is so crazy though because that's you know you you don't think about that. But you right. see it every day in advertisements. I wish I would have known about it when I first got to LA. It would have saved me a lot of time struggling. <laughs> yeah, I've been been holding you down, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Let's talk and it's about. Always fun. It's always different jobs and stuff. 
Huh? You said there's always different it's always jobs? Fun. Yeah, different types of projects. And I tell people it's a lot harder than you think, like trying to keep your head out the frame and keep your hands up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's a lot. That's interesting, though. Mm -hmm. I might really look into that, for real. I think you should. I think you really should. You say these hands, you know, if you say that these... you, you have You have nice hands. Okay. All right. Well, well they have to put some... Some uh, makeup on that tattoo, though, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you know, yeah. a little makeup. Uh, but I have a friend. I have a friend who he got signed. He has a, a hand tattoo, but he yeah, he just puts makeup on. Puts it. makeup on it. Okay. Yeah, I might have to look into that, man. <laughs> Get in Ever come out there to LA, I might have to be like, yo, girl, throw me a bone. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you don't mind coming out here, because a lot of times I get signed. I don't, you know, I don't have to go on in, in on in on a audition mm -hmm. it's just from pictures mostly um, sometimes it in a video but usually they're looking for pictures so we might have to talk that might have to be an off-air discussion i'm gonna have to start getting a percentage of these people i guess <laughs> work hmm Yes. <laughs> no, they do everything it's, i don't know what your body looks like but they got abs they got body double uh, butts, I think is the thing. What Hands. the hell? Smile. I get the BBL. <laughs> <laughs> they got it all. Look it up, parse modeling. And especially anybody out there, uh, people of color, we need more of us. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I might have to holler at you. They might, you know. I mean, I'll come out there if the work is right. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Might I might have to I, holler at you, girl. Yeah, I had like what I worked a, a commercial. I won't say which one, but I worked a commercial. It was like four or five days. Oh wow! So it was a nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Jeez. It was so funny though, cause I was in Vegas. Oh my god, I was in Vegas one time uh, with my friend, and we were getting on the elevator, and I was saying how, cause I've worked at restaurants basically my whole life since I was born, and I'm tired. <laughs> uh, so every day I'm praying that I don't have to go back. So I was talking to her about that, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, if I can get 4K doing a hand job, I don't want to go back to waiting tables." And we were in Las Vegas getting in on the elevator. I was like, "Oh no, y'all, I don't do, I don't give hand jobs." Oh <laughs> wow, modeling <laughs> job, but it sounded real weird. Oh hell, and I got 4K for a hand job. <laughs> that is crazy. How, what? Well, now what's happened? Because I know you said that you got dropped by two agents. Mm -hmm. What happened? Was that at the same time? Did you have two agents at the same time, or that was just back to back type of situations for you? That was a horrible time in my life. Like so literally, nice. everything that could go wrong went wrong. Whole life just fell apart. I was down bad, bad in LA. Um, yeah, okay. I think I was in like a three year relationship that wasn't going well. And then I got grabbed at knife point and that guy ended up uh, stepping in and like basically saving me, but he got hurt. But but then we had, we had, to, I had to break up with him and that was really hard. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, then I got. Wait, 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 hold on. hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt, but mm -hmm. clarify. You met this guy when he stepped in? No, no, no. You were, no. We okay. were already dating. Okay. We were dating. Uh, we, were, we were together for like three years, but it, just, it was just rocky at that point. It was rocky. It was on the rocks. And I got grabbed, and he was he was there with me, so he stepped in. Um, but like I said, we was on the rocks, so yeah. we didn't make it out of that. And He's so, okay? Bro, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. He, he had some healing to do. Uh, he 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 got it bad. It was not it was not fun, uh, oh, and wow. we're still dealing with that in, in courts. Wow. Um, yeah, so that happened. That was just horrible. He was he ended up in ICU. Oh, so man. yeah, that happened. Then we broke up. Then I think I got dropped by my theatrical agent first. He was like, I think you're so talented, but like I just I can't get you into these rooms, and I don't know what it is but it's not working and so i was like all right cool like yeah i respect that and then my hand modeling agent dropped me and they're like you're not booking enough and i was like oh 
yeah great clear it all out god just like uh and then i think then my car got towed and then i ended up in another relationship and then we broke up and it was just everything was a mess it was just all my world was on fire oh my goodness mm -hmm. so i mean how did you how did you crawl up out of that how did you shine that new light it was hard that i had to I up I had to go home for look for two weeks. Went home. I, I was also on the verge of losing my best friends from high school because my communication was not good at that point. So oh, man. I was like, I was, I couldn't be there for them when I wasn't. I was struggling so bad. You weren't. You, you couldn't be there for them because you weren't even there for yourself. That's what I ended up learning later. Like when they confronted me about, it, I was like, oh, girl, I'm sorry. Like I just wasn't showing up for me either. So. Yeah. Nothing I can do. Was I'm it, so sorry. Was it, we made it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Um, what am I trying to say? Did the guy have a lot to do with that? Like, did kind of lose yourself in that as well? Yeah, it wasn't his fault, and it wasn't mm, his, the guy wasn't. Um, not with that friendship, no. Mm. But with my other friends in LA, kind of, I kind of lost myself in that relationship. I was just like doing everything that him and his friends wanted to do. Right. We kind of we had different work schedules, so he was working during the week, and I couldn't really go out during the week because he had to. It was anyway. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, yeah. So I kind of didn't. I wasn't maintaining my own friendships. I wasn't. I wasn't taking care of, taking care of me. I I got lost, and so coming out of that, I was like, "Oh, well, what makes you happy?" Right. And I did not know. I did not know. And then I made the mistake of getting into a relationship. No, that's uh, yeah. Instead of healing first, so, so you, then when we broke up. I was like, "Oh, well, <laughs> it's everything, <laughs> everything great is gone," and uh, I don't know what I, I don't know. God, no, no, so here, so here, let me say something. No, everything great wasn't gone because you still had yourself. And that's where it needed to start with and at in the beginning <laughs> is you. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you, I'm just throwing things out here, but maybe you didn't really know yourself at that time in your life. Because yeah. if you don't know yourself and you're not grounded and rooted and standing on your, on your own two feet, solid and saying, no, this is who I am. Then of course you're gonna wave. You're gonna be just blowing in the wind, and yep. a guy can do that to you. And I'm not saying he did that, but you would allow yourself to be in that situation of basically just running behind him or doing what he wants to do or just making yourself available for him and not, you know, catering to your friends and your your own life and your own well being, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? It happens. Yeah, it I had really? to. I had to burn all that. Everything you just said. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, it happens. Yeah, so you... I I did finally heal, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm a firm believer. Of everything happens for a reason. Every, I need. I needed. Unfortunately, like I needed to be in that relationship, and then I needed it to end because I I learned how to love in a way that I've never yeah. loved before, and I felt love in a way that I never felt love, and I needed to lose that it to find myself. Like I really did. Cause I took note before, like, oh, you don't know what makes you happy, but then I didn't do anything about it. And right. so then when he was gone, I was like, okay, well, I really need to figure this out. And it's acting real something that I really want to do. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Regroup. Yeah, you learn a lot. So, you learn a lot. Yeah. You do. You really learn a lot. You learn what you what you will tolerate, what you won't tolerate, what you like, what you don't mm -hmm. like. You know what I'm saying? What you allow in your space, your energy, and what you deserve. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I look back at the people I dated, I'm like, did you hate yourself, girl? Like, what, what was you doing? He didn't have no bed. What? What? Yeah, well, you know what, Not though? Just... But, so, you know, it's like, but here's the thing. Don't beat yourself up over it because it's all a learning experience and you didn't know what you wanted. A lot of times women are nurturers. So if a man is uh, lacking in certain areas, you feel like you can be that crutch or you could be that rock and you can help build him up. But some men don't want to be built up. Some men want to be little boys. You know what I'm saying? I don't know your situation. I'm just speaking. But some men don't want to be built up. Some men don't want to be men. They want to be little boys. So there's nothing you can do about it. 
So that's where a lot of women do go wrong with trying to help people who don't want to be helped, change people who don't want to be changed. Because a lot of times women will be like, well, I can be the one to do mm-hmm. that. I can be the like one my to cape change. Off. I took my cape off. Yeah, you can't save them, man. You know, <laughs> you can't save. But then you get scorned in the midst of it. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to reel yourself back in and be like, you know what? What the hell's wrong with me? Like, and, and it wasn't and, and all, all that love I was trying to give them and, and hype them up and build them up. I didn't realize I needed that for myself. I wasn't yep. doing that for me. Yep. And so I started to do that for me. And then my my whole life changed whole life changed yeah and was this before like the 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 acting kind of took off for you was this was this prior to that did you have to go through that to kind of come out on the other side and be like you know what this is what i needed this is where i need to be and this is where i'm going yeah i mean kind, kind of uh, acting's always a roller coaster so I, i've had you know the commercials were before that i've okay. had success ups and downs um, but I thought I was going to quit acting at this point. After after all of that, I was like, you know what? Maybe this just isn't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after healing, especially, I was like, oh, okay. I, I recognize that I was searching for validation in places that I didn't need to be. Like, I don't care if the casting director doesn't book me like that. That shouldn't make me happy. That shouldn't be why I'm happy today, like what makes you happy outside of your friendships, your relationships and acting and all that stuff. So I thought I was done with acting and then uh, Sarai asked me to do By The Way. Mm. And so I got on set and I was like, oh no, I I love acting a fool. (laughs) Right, right. This is my calling, this is what I'm meant to do. Um, I had one time I was meditating way before that, I saw myself on stage doing stand up in front of millions of people and I was like oh no that's not for me I don't want that <laughs> Jesus take it away like no but now I'm like okay yeah no that yeah, that is for you I I mean, yeah but what I've seen I mean it it feels natural you know I know you said you've had training and all that but when I see you on stage it feels natural to me so I think don't don't give that up man don't. well I had I had stage fright. I had horrible horrible stage fright that was getting in the way uh, Which I think I think I've, I've I've gotten over. I used to have really bad anxiety and stage fright, and I it's been better. Stop caring. Better. Yeah, but then the caring, huh? You have to stop caring. Yeah. Don't give a fuck. You really yeah. That's that's what it is. Ask Sarai. Mm-hmm. I bet you she don't mm-hmm. give a shit, right? She don't. You could tell. Mm-hmm. So you yeah, I'm I'm just being real. Like you could tell yeah. she doesn't. So mm-hmm. you got to stop caring. That's really yeah. what it's all about. Stop caring about what people think or what people are going to think or or how yeah. they're going to respond. Because if you don't care, mm-hmm. listen, one joke goes flat. You move on to the next like it yeah. wasn't even a joke. Stop caring. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's what happened. Like right before the pandemic, I started going. I was like, okay, let me. Because I do. I love being on stage. And I, I think I'm really good at it. Yeah. I was like, let's get back out there and uh it, it was a it was a huge difference but then the world shut down so now it's like maybe i'm scared again i don't know <laughs> no have you been up have you been back since yeah i've been back i've been oh. back it's been good it's been okay good, yeah. it's been one good. time i i randomly my friend was in town and we walked by a place uh, having an open mic and mm-hmm. they were like get on stage and then i ended up doing 10 minutes so oh I'm wow like, yeah that's yeah. what's up that yeah. felt good didn't it it felt great it felt amazing yeah man that's what's up i'm a we going to a clip we going to a clip let's laugh a little bit <laughs> this is this is this is diani doing her thing on stage y'all Let, let's check out let's go i get a lot of questions about my hair actually they're just like um so when you cut your hair did you feel liberated or Beautiful. Okay. And so brave. Okay. <laughs> and then he leaned in close and he's like, So tell me, was it cancer? <laughs> or AIDS? 
natural to me that's one of my favorite jokes <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and you could tell you're living in that like yeah it was just it was mind-blowing like what what who who be asking people if they got AIDS so that really happened to you yes that really happened. <laughs> wow yes all my stand-up is from my real life it's from it's Tricky. Good, so good, that, good. Yeah, that definitely happened. <laughs> and he that, didn't ask for my number or anything. He just... He, he was trying to see like, about you. He was trying to make sure you're okay. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, you good? <laughs> wow. Yes. That is crazy. That is crazy, man. Let's talk about, um. by the way, season yeah. two. When, can, I'm ready. It's happening. We, it's happening. You're, you're, it's happening. We're we gonna see you back in that. You, yes. You bringing the gang I, back. I'm so ready for it. I'm so happy that Sarai is doing a season two. Uh, she told me to lock in some dates to start start filming, so it's real. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I haven't seen the script yet, but she said she wrote it. <laughs> That's what's up, man. For everybody, we're talking about um, the web series called By the Way. Uh, starring Sarai and Jessica Simone and yours truly. All right. Um, you guys, make sure you go check out season one, actually. Season one is great. What is it? Six or seven episodes? I think it's like seven. Yeah. Seven episodes. Six. Okay. Yeah. So tell well, tell everybody a little bit about it, you know, if they haven't seen the other interview that we did. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, a web series about Ada, who's trying to figure out, navigate her sexuality coming from a religious background. And then I'm, I play Nikki. I'm the nosy neighbor who is in everybody's business. And if I guess figured out my own sexuality too. <laughs> I, I do dabble. Okay. So, so Nikki's a little curious too, even though she's yeah. being nosy. Mm-hmm. You're trying to figure some things. Yeah, but she's not claiming nothing. She not she she claims she's straight. But, but she claims she's straight. <laughs> getting curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she getting curious about a day. No, but right. it's definitely funny. I really, really enjoyed the series. I'm actually gonna play a clip from that too. Can we can we jump to that? Let's watch it. Let's watch Let, it. Let's play the clip, man. Let's go. Let's get this clip in. Let me grab this here, and let's go. when I thought things couldn't get no worse. Oof. Mm. In comes our nosy neighbor. Oof. She can't hold water goes in a bucket. Oh, y'all nasty. Does it smell like y'all been bumping peaches? <laughs> a little sin and regret? <laughs> oh, wait till I tell the neighbor. Thank you. Yo, daddy. Oh, he should know about this. No, no, no. Yeah, I can't wait for season two. <laughs> I'm so excited. I, playing Nikki was like one of my favorite things. Uh -huh. I was a little relatable because I'm, I'm I'm very nosy, so. <laughs> you are nosy. You are that neighbor. So she knew who to call on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love it. I can't wait to season two. I told her, man, I like, guess great writing. The production is great. The acting is great. Like, yeah, and I can't wait to see it on on Netflix or somewhere like for real. Let's speak that into existence. Speak yes. it. Speak <laughs> it. Let's speak it's it. No, it's that good though. It really is. Oh. You 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 I girls. Thank you. Yeah, you see, girls are onto something. I didn't write it, but... <laughs> huh? I said I didn't write it, but 
<laughs> I did a little improv in there somewhere. So. Hey, you're a part of it, so it matters, right? You make it what it is. Every yes. every 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 character counts, right? Um, before we get off acting, because I want to jump into your podcast, you actually have a podcast of your own called Boom yeah. Stories, right? Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that. But Jason Bateman, you said you want to be the female Jason Bateman. Why? Explain that. Explain that. Oh my gosh, you have looked into some things that I have not <laughs> seen in so long. Um, but I, I just, I love, 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 love Jason Bateman. And he, so, okay, in, in improv, you are either, most times, you're either the wacky character or you're the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, for some reason, don't like playing the voice of reason, but I love it. And you just throw it up and let the other person duck it in. And I feel like Jason Bateman is that kind of comedian. Like, he's just saying regular, normal things, but it's just hilarious. And I love him. I fell in love. Arrested Development just... That man can do no wrong, really. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, he, he's put in the work. So, I mean, that's a good person yeah. to model your career behind, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Hey, strive for it. Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. But I came up with that so long ago. I might mean, rethink my... You, you think it's changed a little bit? Is there it some probably idea? has. I feel like it probably has. I mean, he's still... I love him. But I don't know if I would call myself the female Jason Bateman. No, because you're you. You are you. <laughs> you are you. Create That's, you. That part. That's yes. This podcast. Tell us about your podcast, Boomtown Stories. Uh, I was listening to a little bit of it, but tell the people. Yeah. So it's called Boomtown Stories. I do that with one of my best friends, Shanae, that I met in college. Okay. She's a dancer as well. And it was her idea. She was I think she said she was hanging out with some of her family members and just hearing stories about them that she never heard before and it just blew her mind and she was like I would love to like get to know everybody so especially the older generation to keep those stories going so Mm. we got together and started interviewing we started out with boomers that were supposed to be boomers I think like for 1962 yeah and below but then we ran out of people we ran out of old people so, <laughs> <laughs> so now we just do like i think it happened a few times where we like just texted friends like hey can you just be on it and we had so much fun doing that because that was kind of nostalgic we we're mm-hmm. like oh man i haven't thought about that you know wearing two polos and snap music i haven't thought about that in such a long time so now we're just out here interviewing so, so you so basically you're interviewing people about things of old about the past it's kind of taking it back a little bit yeah kind of just about how they grew up um oh, we okay. talk about big news stories any news events that happened when they were growing up uh, and it could be like political or yeah. in music industry like one person was like oh when tupac died or yeah. Janet Jackson's nipple came out like that was big okay or, just something that was like a shift in their life. It's something that's yeah, stuck with them that's big. That, yeah, exactly. Oh, man, that's we pretty cool. Advice, we drink. We, we have fun. We just chat. We, we love to hear wild stories. We love to pe- hear people's wild stories. Uh, oh, we, wow. We're here the shenanigans. So <laughs> if you like drug stories or drinking in high school or college, we want to know about it. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I mean, it keeps it interesting. Fun. Like, you never know what you're in for. Like, that's... Never know. That's a dope kind of stuff. But I really like how you, you know, how you were interviewing the baby boomers and just people of, of you know, up in age that could really tell you some things that you probably never even heard, never thought yeah. about, kind of giving you a reflection of what it was back then, what it was like growing yeah, up. Yeah, we get some history lessons. A lot of yeah. we get some shenanigans, but we get some history lessons. And and then most part, it's, it's inspirational as well, because at the end, the shenanigans, then they turn their life around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a lesson to be yeah. learned. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's so, dope. Yeah. And even the other day, I was talking to my grandma, and she was telling me stories about my mom and my other grandma and my dad, that I, stories I never heard, I didn't know about. And I was like, oh, wow, this is mind-blowing. Because she was saying stuff about my mom. I was like, that is not the same woman that I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. That ain't my mama. <laughs> well, like, you yeah, do she know was so that. She crying all the time. 
Yeah, you do know they 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 grew up like we grew up, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they're people. They're people too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So where can uh, people listen to it? Where can people listen to the podcast? At? Oh, it's all the places: uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor. We actually got accepted to um, Hoo Ha Ha. Mm. Yeah, I heard of it. Yeah, I heard of okay. it. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, we're under podcast you love. Uh, or they love somebody love us. So somebody love us. <laughs> anyway, you could listen to a podcast. You can find us there. Okay. Yeah, That's give dope. it a listen. Comment, share. I also I take sometimes I take little clips of stories that people have told, and then I do reenactments of them. Oh wow! And, yeah. Okay. So that, yeah, I gotta go listen to that. I really, I'm, I'm interested in that for real. It's a hoot. I think it's a hoot. Sometimes we get too drunk though, and, and we go off the rails. But <laughs> we, we try not to do that because each week we have a specialty cocktail. So oh, uh, okay. I'll pick a drink or she'll pick a drink that we've never had before. And okay. so sometimes the drinks are too delicious, and, and yeah, interview can get. get, get, get. <laughs> Go, are, right now, are your the, are your guests drinking too? Do you do you, if are, they want to? Okay, if they want to, we do not force them to, obviously. But like we, yeah, you get better stories if they're drinking. <laughs> do you have people? So you you're doing it? Uh, you do it remote as well, though. Like they don't have to be in the same room with you, right? Right. Okay. So we usually do it over Zoom, but we never use the video footage. Okay, got you, got you, got you. And yeah, you said people from all over. And you do it once a week. When when do they air? What days? They usually air on Fridays. Right now, we're taking a brief break. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. But on Fridays. All right. Don't break too long, though. <laughs> I know. Don't break too long. Bring it back. We'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. Yeah. We'll be back. back. I'm gonna get that link though. I'm, I don't think I have the link in the description right now, but I'm gonna get the link for at least for the oh, anchor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or even for awesome. the Apple, I'll go get the Apple and the anchor and put it in the link as well. Put it in the description. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. I'll get that to you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll do the anchor because everybody doesn't have an iPhone, right? True. And in anchor, you can click the link and just go listen to the podcast okay. on the website. Okay. So that way everybody can listen to it. Perfect. Right? Makes sense, right? Thank you. Yeah, I think I need to do that for myself too. I don't think I have the anchor. I don't think I have the anchor link in my um in my Instagram link. Thing. Yeah, I'm actually surprised because I feel because on anchor you can see like where people listen. Yeah. From. And a lot of people do listen from Apple though, which I was surprised because I listen to podcasts on Spotify. Okay. Apparently that's not popular. Well, you know what? A lot of people. I'm gonna tell you why. A lot of people don't know that Spotify offers podcasts for free you don't have to have a subscription to spotify to listen to the podcast you can listen to any podcast on there for free but a lot of people don't know that and they don't advertise it you know what i'm saying and then also go ahead i just said spotify come on get with, get with it yeah they need to get with it because a lot know. a lot of people have iphones so they just automatically go to the podcast app on there and say well i'm not gonna go and pay money for spotify but they don't know spotify is free and and spotify from what i'm hearing has like the, some of the best podcasts that's great and you know now that you say that because i sometimes if i can't sleep then i'll listen to ocean sounds mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that i was listening to a podcast the whole time it was just, just it's a whole podcast of ocean sounds for real mm -hmm. <laughs> and i bet yeah. you it's top rated too <laughs> That's a cheat code, man. You know everybody wants to listen to like rain or ocean sounds, right, waterfalls, right. and then they made it a podcast. That's a cheat yeah, code. It's a whole podcast. I didn't know. Like, Do they ever have like advertising come up on that? Yeah, that's how I found out. <laughs> yeah, see, like you're listening to. They're ocean getting podcast. to the money. They're getting to the money. I'm yeah. telling you. I'm yeah. telling you, because so many have... people like to listen to nature sounds. Yeah, it helps me when I can't sleep. Yeah, who would have thought? Wow. <laughs> I think I'm going to try that tonight. It's like, like the ocean or some raindrops or something. Rainforest. Yeah. Oh, man. That's the best. Mm -hmm. You hit a little bird. <laughs> oh, in the back and it's <laughs> hitting off the leaves. Oh, man. Girl, you Look, put we me got, on. We gotta, you got to get your podcast. <laughs> you, got, you got the sound effects going. I know, right? I can do it with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I know, right? A whole podcast of like nature sounds made from the mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's like the wind blowing. <laughs> Yo, the funny thing about that is somebody will listen to it. <laughs> Absolutely. I would, li- I would love that. I would crack up. I mean, not for sleep, but I'd be like, this is so stupid. <laughs> right, right. Oh, God. That made my head hurt. <laughs> oh, man. That is too funny. Hey, okay, so listen. Before we get out of here. Yeah. Self-analysis. What's one thing that you feel like you could be doing better to get you to that next level? Oh, I'm, I'm still working on believing in myself wholeheartedly like because I still a little part of me is insecure because I don't have all this training people who've been doing acting for years and like I always knew I was going to be an actor and I've been training and I I don't have that I just kind of fell into this so um, a part of me is still like well you don't know what you're doing so but don't think oh yeah don't think that way Um, yeah we're we're, we're learning I say we a lot and it's just me but we we a group. No, it's you, <laughs> you and your subconscious. It's we. Yeah, me myself and I. It's we living we. it. We you and it's you and Bay. You yeah, know like, exactly. You and Shout Bay. Out to I and Bay. Yes. Just, yes. Yes. Y'all check out yeah. Jessica Simone's uh, I'm Bay. It's also another web series on YouTube. It's great. Check it out. Great message, by the way, and yes. they'll understand. But yeah, it's you and Bay. So yeah, it's yeah. we. But yeah, yeah, but here's here's the thing too. Understand where you are. You're in LA. That's the fabric. That's the fabric of LA is acting. The fabric of LA is acting. So you have these kids who grew up and that's all they knew. They may have parents that were actors, successful or not, but that's all they know. It's a fabric. It's in them. So you can't pitch yourself up against them. You can't pitch yeah. yourself up against people who've been doing that their whole entire life. Just fall in line and and, and stay in your lane. And just grow I as you... people have asked me to do their projects just from knowing me and and me sending my stuff like it's there it's just something that i had to work on with myself and that i'm still working on but things have changed so much now that i believe that i deserve yeah. to be going where i'm going i do have yeah. a, another commercial print agent now okay. and I, yeah i've been booked for print stuff and and then and people are, I'm doing, I have three projects coming up. So, okay. yeah, girl. I, yeah, you are, hey, I, listen. I, I gotta get out my own, you just gotta get out your own get way. Get out your own way, know that you're enough. And like you said at the top of the show, if you walk in there with the confidence, you may not mm-hmm. have, you may not be the most skilled in the room, but if you walk in there right. with that confidence, people are gonna believe in that. Yep. And you'll, you'll get that shot that you wouldn't have gotten had you came in there all meek and feeble and you know what I'm saying like yeah just yeah. just hey just know that you're enough man at the end of the day we don't have to know it all in, in in a day you don't have to know it all in a year but just know that you're enough and you're growing towards that and you're working towards that you know what I mean that's all it is that's- preaching you be preaching I don't know if you know this but this show you be preaching you you are a preacher <laughs> <laughs> I just try to feed and you know what I mean? I try to speak life into people. I try to give them something to, you know, to take with them for real. Like it's all about you. So I just want to pour into you where I can. If I hear something, I always try to, you know, give my two cents and I hope it's taken well and it's worth something. You know what I mean? Because I love it. It, especially because I, I love pouring into people, but when it comes to me, it's a whole different story. So yes, please pour, pour. I will take it. <laughs> and hear it. <laughs> But and here's the, here's the caveat about that. You're not the only person like that, though. A lot mm-hmm. of people second guess themselves. Even the ones who are the most confident looking or appealing, they second guess themselves. But they just know how to put that on, and it works. It works, man. It works. People who you look at that seem that they have it all figured out, a lot of them don't. I learned but, that. But they, but this they person- know. I thought this girl was so confident. I was like, you are the most confident person that I know. And it turns out just now insecure, yep. just like the rest of us. <laughs> like, yep. oh, well, you put on 
That yep. was a great show, ma'am. That is yep. a great show. What did Michael Jackson <laughs> say? You are not alone? Girl, that's a true <laughs> You are not alone. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's, it, 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 the older you get, the more you learn about that, too. Like, we don't, none of us know what we're doing. We're just on a floating rock. Winging it. <laughs> winging it till you really figure it out but if you wing it long enough you're gonna get it right you know what i mean yeah because you're gonna make those mistakes but nobody knows that you made the mistake because you look confident doing it exactly. i meant to do that exactly and just be you unapologetically at the end of the day like i, I said girl understand. don't give a shit i know yeah. i don't <laughs> i was a big people pleaser for a long time kind of oh. yeah That's and what you cannot do yeah. That's you can't please them. Nope. <laughs> can't please them. Nah. If there's one thing for you sure, have... you won't please them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You won't. Facts. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Even if you are pleasing them, they're gonna find something. Yeah. They're gonna find something. That's just I think that's just human nature for most people. I don't get it. Like, let it be. If it's good, let it be. But nah. Right. Anyway, let me stop preaching. I'm going to let you out of here, girl. It's been good. It's been real. I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad I was worried. I thought you were going to do some um, Martin. No. <laughs> no. I No, no. I wasn't going to put you through that. Since I, since okay. I put y'all through that last time, I wasn't going to go, you know. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I'm going to fail. I meant no. to study, but. <laughs> You know what? I should have. I should have brought Martin back. Like, no, we did. Well, time to go. Because <laughs> I can pull him up now. You... No, I got to go. Well, I got uh, places to be. <laughs> I got, um, you know, I got I got all types of little trivia over here. But, yeah. We... That's crazy. I think I hear somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a ride in the back? Is that some ride calling you? <laughs> oh, man. Nah, I ain't going to do you like that. We're good. I just got you on here so for a good that. conversation. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Like I said, man, y'all the crew. Y'all do your yes. thing. You know, I love what you, everybody's doing. Of yours. I appreciate so, it. Keep I, what you're doing. I appreciate it. Root your boy on. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm I'm over here cheering for y'all. Everything y'all yes. do. We all gonna be on the red carpets together. Yes. We'll look back at these interviews and be like, remember when? Yep. Yeah, and that's how it goes too. Even like you know, you got a lot of people out there who came up together. It's like, oh dang, they knew each other before. Yeah. That's how it happens, man. But y'all are good people though, good energy. And like I told Sarai, when me and my wife come out there, we coming over there. She gotta cook that good food. We gotta go to Nobu. Tell you. I wanna try yes. that out. Yes, but, uh, Sarai is the best chef on whatever side of town she is on. <laughs> Her food is so good. Okay. So, yeah, and Nobu, absolutely. You have to. You you definitely. Even if you just go get a drink, if you don't want to try that food, but you no. definitely have to. go. It's okay. a beautiful restaurant, and everyone is so nice. Okay. Which mm -hmm. wait is it? How many locations are out there? Because I know it's Malibu. Is there another? Well, one? There's two. Yeah. There's one in like L.A. L.A. Uh, but don't go to that. I mean, go to Malibu. Want, yeah, but go to Malibu. It's it's right on the water. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I'm yeah. looking for. You have to go. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Cool. We'll do that. I already told my wife it's going down. <laughs> I already told her. I was like, hey, when we go out to LA, we got to uh, make a pit stop by yeah, the yeah. first house. Go get some food. <laughs> Let's go. So we all pull up. I'll let you know. Yeah, I let me know. Her. Yeah, for real. I told her we got to take a trip. I try to go every year, but you know, the pandemic had it all shut down and stuff. So I didn't do that. Didn't go last year because I was moving and all types of stuff. This year, I got a couple of trips, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. I'll let y'all know, though. Yeah. We'll pull up. Let us know. I will pull up. Y'all pull up. We're going to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> For real. We'll make it a date. Yay! All right. Well, listen, I really appreciate you. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in, checking us out, watching, hanging out with us every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know where I'm at. I'm kicking it with somebody cool. Dropping gems, man. Um, peace and love. Love y'all. Thank you. We out of here. Any last words, girl? Love yourself. There it is. <laughs> all of her links are down in the description. Website, Instagram, TikTok, all that. Check her out. And I'll put that um, podcast down there, too. We out of here. Yes. All right.
Peace.